Good morning and welcome to Calendar Bay Church Online. I'm Pastor John Intoff and thank you so much for joining us for our online service today. Uh, well, happy Easter. It is Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday. And I hope that you had an opportunity to be able to reflect this week as we went through Good Friday and remember, uh, but also look forward to celebrating his resurrection and the living hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Uh, we want to extend our apologies for not being able to have our online service last week. Uh, we had some technical difficulties uh, and uh, we actually originally thought that we weren't going to be able to have our service this week because the part was going to take longer uh, than we anticipated. But uh, thanks to uh, uh, the wonders of Amazon, we were able to get the part much quicker and uh, to be able to have the service today. Uh, speaking of our service, uh, we appreciate you being a part of our services here at Calendar Bay Church. And uh, there's a couple ways that you can do that. You can be joined online or in person. The online service can be enjoyed two ways. One, we do what's called the YouTube premiere, which takes place Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. You can join with others and watch the service at the same time. So that way you're able to interact with one another online as you watch the service. After that point, it's available at any time and you can watch the service. Uh, you can also uh, join us in person here at the church at 10.30 a.m. at Calendar Bay Church. Uh, we have programs for uh, junior church, which is ages 5 to 12. Uh, nursery is offered most weeks. Uh, and that's for uh, those that are younger than age five. And uh, so whatever way you would choose to be a part of the service, we just appreciate your connection here at Calendar Bay Church and pray that God would minister to you. Uh, if you want to be updated on the different things that are going on around Calendar Bay Church, uh, the best way to do that is to go to our online bulletin, which is at our webpage, calendarbaychurch.ca slash bulletin. You should be able to find the uh, updated bulletin. It has information about all the different things that are going on here at the church, uh, Bible studies, small groups, uh, men's breakfast, uh, any of a number of other things that are going on. And so uh, if you want to go check that out, uh, there's a printable version if you like uh, it in print. And so you can print it online as well. Uh, so that is all available at our website, uh, calendarbaychurch.ca. Well, thank you for your ongoing support of Calendar Bay Church. And if you would like to give to the ministry here at uh, Calendar Bay Church, there's a couple ways that you can do that. One, you can... Uh, Mail your gift in, and all you have to do is send it to uh, Calendar Bay Church, Box 218, Calendar, Ontario, P0H1H0. Again, that address is Calendar Bay Church, Box 218, Calendar, Ontario, P0H1H0. Uh, you can also go online and safely and securely give that way. Uh, basically, what you're doing is you're setting up an e-transfer, and that information is available at counterbaychurch.ca slash give. And if you go there, it'll show you how to be able to do that. Uh, thank you again for your support here at Calendar Bay Church. We wouldn't be able to do any of our ministry uh, without your great financial support. Well, as we are at Easter Sunday, we want to sing a great song that reminds us that Christ the Lord is risen today. Let's sing it together.
Over the last number of weeks, we've been looking at the centrality of the cross of Christ and, and really kind of filling in some of the basics and of an understanding of the cross. And one of my rituals or, or things that I do on a daily basis is I read the Our Daily Bread. And I was interested, very interested, for a number of reasons in one of the devotionals this week because it was called uh, Missing the Basics. And it, part of the reason why it caught my attention was because it talked about McDonald's and two of my daughters uh, work for McDonald's. And so I was very interested in this. And they said a number of years ago, A&W had a com campaign in order to be able to compete with one of the most popular um, hamburgers at McDonald's which is the quarter pounder and so they uh, the McDonald's quarter pounder was selling for a certain amount and so what A&W did was is they introduced to what they call the third of a pounder and so and it was to go in direct competition with the quarter pounder now if you know anything about math you know that a third of a pound is actually more than a quarter of a pound a quarter of a pound is less than a third of the pound but what they discovered was is that people's math was not so good and the, and the third of a pounder didn't sell very well because they thought it was less than a quarter pound because four is bigger than three so a quarter pound must be bigger than a third of a pound and so that was where the confusion was and so they actually had to drop the campaign because of people's lack of basic understanding of math and now some are probably going y you mean that's true because <laughs> you're if you're anything like some of the people in my life, math is not your thing. And so when it comes to the basics of faith, sometimes we need to go back and, and take a look at it again. And what we want to talk about today is what I'm calling the relevant resurrection. You know, the resurrection took place a long time ago. And we want to remind ourselves again of the importance of the resurrection because the resurrection has an enormous significance. Um, if you go through scripture, uh, we see that, that Jesus, and we, and we talked about this uh, weeks ago when we were talking about the cross, that you know Jesus t was talking even before he went to the cross, that he was going around and he was saying uh, that he would die and then it would goes on and it says that in three days he will rise and so from jesus's teaching foundational teaching before the cross he let them know that he was going to die but that that was not going to be the end that he was going to rise as well and so jesus taught even before the cross that the resurrection was going to be a central part of his uh plan that he was doing and uh, and Acts four two. This is uh, they're talking about. This is the early church. It was they it was they were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. And so here we have at the very beginning of the church, one of the foundational truths that was being taught was the resurrection of Jesus. And and the apostle Paul. He gets into a debate in the city of Athens, and they actually are kind of nasty. They call them names, and, uh, and, but at the foundation of the truth that Paul was teaching, found in Acts 17, 8, uh, 18, it says, They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So there you see the truth of Jesus and the resurrection. So again, foundational. And the, and the Apostle Paul, when he's kind of laying down the basics in 1 Corinthians 15, like Paul was teaching the churches, wanting to make sure that they laid down a good foundation uh, for them to uh, follow. And this is what he says in Acts 15. Uh, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. So Paul's saying this is of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. And so Paul, in the foundations of faith, talks about the importance of Christ dying and his resurrection. Now, if we're trying to define what the resurrection is all about, if we look at a, a working definition, 
Um, what it doesn't mean when we talk about the resurrection is it doesn't mean his remembrance will keep him alive. You know, sometimes you'll have, um, you know, different people who, who die and and then even after they're dead, they 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 will say something like I you know because uh, I don't know if you remember it was in a, he was a Cuban uh, figure uh, during the revolution that uh, uh, Che and Che lives was was something that was, but he was dead he was actually literally dead but what they were talking about was is that his message will live on. And so when we talk about Jesus being resurrected and Jesus is alive, it's not that we're saying that his message is just alive. He's alive. And so it's not merely a presentation of the message will continue. Like, you know, even, you know, if you go to a funeral or something like that, you know, and I've said this at a funeral as I was, as I was doing it is, is that, you know, this person will live on in you that their values and that they'll live on in you. Does that mean that they're actually living in you? No, no, it doesn't. But their memory will, and, and by, by uh, doing the things that they, 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 their memory lives on in you. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. And it doesn't mean he was res res resuscitated and then died again. You know, there, there are different theories that are out there. I've, I've read a number of them that, you know, that Jesus was really not dead, that he was just kind of asleep. And, and then eventually he was uh, raised uh, when he was, they said it was resurrected, but really it was just him and he hadn't been dead. And, and so that's kind of what they were talking about and, and that he died again. That's not the case either. That when Jesus... Uh, when Jesus was resurrected, he was literally dead. Reminds me of the Monty Python. Dead, 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 dead. He was dead. And, and so here we have, and he wasn't that it, it was, wasn't like Lazarus. You know, there's a story in scripture where Jesus raises the individual Lazarus from the dead. And so he's in the tomb, he's dead, and Jesus raises him to life. Eventually, what happens to Lazarus is, is that uh, he dies again. So, which I always thought that was a bit of a bummer for him. Then, you know, he went through death, raised a new life, and then he died again. With Jesus, that's not the case at all. It wasn't that he died and, and then they kind of resuscitated him. Jesus was raised to new life. And so this is what John Stott, the theologian, says. He says, God performed a dramatic act by which he arrested the process of decay, de decomposition, and corruption, rescued Jesus out of the realm of death, and transformed his body into a new vehicle for his personality so that he uh, had a new power and was now immortal, never to die again. And that's what the resurrection means. When we talk about the resurrection, that's the miracle that God performed. And so why does the resurrection matter to us? And today I just want to, in the time that we have, bring out three key points of what, why the resurrection is so important. The first one is, is that it assures us of forgiveness. It assures us of forgiveness. As we've talked about the message of the cross, it was so that we could be forgiven. And a lot of the symbolism that goes behind it was for our atonement, for the forgiveness of our sins. And so what the resurrection does is it assures us of forgiveness. Because if Jesus doesn't rise from the dead, we'd be kind of going, well, I hope my sins are forgiven. He said that my sins were going to be forgiven. But do we really know for sure? So there's an assurance of forgiveness. And so this forgiveness is an absolute necessity because when we look at it from the perspective that this, this forgiveness is all about the life that we live, that there is a new life that we have, and that forgiveness gives us that new life. And that also, that forgiveness is not only important for this life, it's important for eternity, because without the forgiveness of our sins, we are going to die alone in our sins. And so we want to make sure that that happens. And so forgiveness is promised through the cross. 
Uh, and so what Jesus does is that he links the cross and our forgiveness. And on the cross, Jesus said, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Your sins are forgiven. And actually, that's an interesting, the your sins are forgiven is an interesting kind of little story. Uh, Jesus got often got in trouble. And one of the things that he would got in trouble for was when he, when he healed some people. And so he healed people on the Sabbath, which made the religious people because you weren't supposed to do things. And they, so they got upset about that. The other thing that he did was, is that he was um, healing somebody. And instead of saying you're healed, Jesus says your sins are forgiven. And, and that got everybody, the people, religious leaders, they wouldn't have minded so much. They, they had some problems, but they wouldn't have minded if Jesus would have said, you're healed. But Jesus doesn't do that. He doesn't say you're healed. He says your sins are forgiven. And the sins forgiven, you know, that was beyond what people could do. People couldn't say to you, your sins are forgiven. Only God could do that. And so here Jesus, at this point, even before, again, before the cross happens, he is dealing with the deeper things that are going on. You know, what happens if you're healed? Well, eventually you're still going to get sick and you're going to die again. But when you say your sins are forgiven, that deals with deeper things and it has deeper repercussions. And so Jesus wants to make sure that what he accomplished at the cross is not uh, that we're unsure whether or not it has been um, that it has any basis and so this is what it says in in first uh, corinthians 15 uh, 16 and 17 for if the dead are not raised then christ has not been raised either and if christ has not been raised your faith is futile you are still in your sins by raising Christ, God assured us that he approved of what Jesus had done on the cross and that he did not die in vain. And so what the cross, uh, the uh, resurrection does is it validates the death of Jesus Christ. And so by being raised from the dead, he showed that he conquered death and that his death conquered sin and it conquered the grave. And so there is an assuredness that we get of our forgiveness because of the resurrection. Now, there's a second thing that we are assured of through uh, the resurrection. The, the second one is that it assures us of God's power. So not only are we our sins dealt with, and we are forgiven, and so we can live in a new way because of the forgiveness that we have in Jesus Christ, we are and our eternity is taken care of we are sealed for eternity and so we are have our our eternal destiny verified and confirmed it assures us of god's power because we need both forgiveness in the past but we need to have his power in the present and so jesus on the cross says not only am i going to deal with your sin I am going to give you the power of a changed life. Scripture tells us that if anyone is in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Romans 12 talks about the transformation that takes place in our lives when we step into a relationship with Christ. And so the question we have to ask ourselves, is God really able to change human nature? Is God able to transform and change us into the image of Christ? And the resurrection says, yes, yes, he can. Just as Christ was transformed and changed, so too we were dead in our sins, we're buried with Christ, we're raised to new life in Christ through the resurrection. And so we are given everything we need in order to be able to live a life of godliness that the resurrection gives us the power that we need in order to be able so i don't have to stay the same individual anymore that god is going to give me the power to be able to transform and change my life and and this is what paul says 
Paul says, he prays that God would open the eyes of your heart. And this is what he says. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his uncomparably great power for us who believe. And that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Paul repeats kind of the same idea in Philippians 3, 10 and 11. He says, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his deaths, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection of the dead. So Paul is saying we need to pray that uh, the eyes of our heart are open to be able to see the power that is available to us in order for God to be able to transform and change our lives. And that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that is at work in each and every one of us. And so God's power is available in order to be able to change us. And so we are not alone on this journey. It's not as if uh, we are just turning over a new leaf. God's power is the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the supreme evidence of the power of God in in history and that same resurrection power which god displayed in jesus christ when he raised him from the dead is available to us today let's look again at what uh, the theologian john stott said he says we are always in danger of trivializing the christian good news but also always in danger of minimizing what god by his resurrection power is able to do in ordinary human beings like you and me he goes on and he says this listen listen to this we sometimes talk of being a christian as if it were really no more than turning over a new leaf or maybe becoming a little religious or making a few superficial changes to our usual pattern of life. But when you scratch the surface, we are the same old pagans underneath. No real change has taken place. I want to assure you that becoming um, and being a Christian, according to the New Testament, is something far more radical than that and radical is the right word because it means going to the very roots of our human being and human personality becoming a christian is nothing less than a resurrection from spiritual death and the beginning of an entirely new life in the power of the resurrection of jesus christ in a word the same God of supernatural power who raised Jesus from physical death can raise us up from spiritual death and make us alive and alert to spiritual things. We can know that God can raise us from that dead because he raised Christ. He can change us because he changed Christ. God is able to transform and change us. And his power is available to each one of us. It's not just turning over a new leaf or just adjusting things slightly. God is in the business of transforming and changing us. And the resurrection is proof of that. That Jesus was raised to new life and you and I can be uh, raised to new life. Jesus was transformed and changed. So too, we can be transformed and changed by the power of the resurrection. And the last thing that we want to talk about today is, is that it assures us of God's ultimate triumph. It assures us of God's ultimate triumph. You know, when we look at the future from a purely secular standpoint, modern philosophy and thinking generally agrees that life is meaningless. If you look at it from an atheistic perspective, life really has no meaning. 
One article I read said there are gen no answers to the big questions, so they try to find meaning in the little answers. And so basically what that says is because there isn't any larger answers to the big questions of life, that l and life is basically meaningless, you have to create meaning by finding it in the little things of what, you know, find it in your job and find it in various other things. And scripture totally doesn't agree with that. It says that uh, you can't find any meaning or purpose under the sun. And what that means is, is that if you try to find meaning on this planet on its own, that the only place you can find meaning is beyond that. That the answers to the big questions is out there. Well, because modern philosophy teaches us that ultimately there is no hope beyond the here and now. Listen to this. This is a quote from Bertrand Russell, who is an atheist and a philosopher. He's passed away now. But this is what he said. When I die, I believe that I shall rot. And that is the end. All the labors of this age, the inspiration, the noonday brightness of human genius are destined to extinction. The whole temple of man's achievement must inevitably be buried in the debris of a universe in ruins. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a very optimistic view on life. But the resurrection shows that there is hope. 1 Peter 1.3 says, In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The writer of Hebrews in 619 says, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. That the message of the resurrection is the assurance of God's ultimate triumph. Scripture says that death has been swallowed up in victory, that our future is secure, that the infilling of the Holy Spirit gives us daily hope. The message of the resurrection is, is that God is victorious and that he has triumphed over death and sin and has made it that we can have a relationship, a living relationship with him here and now. And I, I love this phrase and I often use it. Strength for today, bright hope for tomorrow. And so the resurrection is just as relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago. There, through the resurrection, there is an assurance of God's forgiveness. There is an assurance of God's power. And ultimately, there is an assurance of God's ultimate triumph. And so the resurrection is just as meaningful and gives us hope today and into the future. And so we can rest in the wonderful truth of the resurrection. And so maybe today you've never made that decision to follow Jesus and, and really live in the resurrection, the forgiveness that's allow, uh, been given. And maybe today is the day that you invite Jesus into your heart. I would encourage you to do that. Maybe, you know, you've been going through a hard time and you really don't think that God can do any transformation. The power of the resurrection says God can transform and change you more into his image and change him to be like him. And ultimately, it gives us the great triumph. And whether it be uh, as we uh, walk from here into eternity or through Christ's return, which is still the hope of the church, we can rest in that he has accomplished the great victory through the resurrection. And we can live in the living hope. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this Easter where we can celebrate that the resurrection is just as relevant today as it was so many years ago. And that through it, we can have assuredness of forgiveness that your power is guaranteed to each one of us and you help us to live in the ultimate triumph that you accomplished. And so God, we thank you for the living hope that we have in Jesus Christ. For we ask it in Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. We want to sing Living Hope and just remind ourselves again that this is what the resurrection accomplished, the living hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Let's sing it together.
Well, thank you so much for being a part of our service today. I pray that the rest of your Easter weekend will be one where you'll be able to celebrate and remember and give thanks. Um, if you're watching the YouTube premiere, I would encourage you to hang around for a few minutes. Let's encourage one another. Let's bless one another. Maybe something spoke to you today as we went through God's word. And so let's do that. God bless you. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful week.